At our U.S. bishops meeting in Atlanta three weeks ago, we spent a good deal of time discussing threats to religious liberty that we are facing here in the United States. And today, July 1st, we are on day 11 of the special two-week period of intense prayer for the protection of religious liberty in the United States, which we are calling the Fortnight for Freedom. We began this vigil of prayer on July 21st, and it's continuing through July 4th. The Catholic bishops of the United States are asking everyone to pray that the mandate of the federal government be overturned, which will require religious employers to offer health insurance coverage for contraception, sterilization, and abortion-inducing drugs, all of which we hold to be immoral, and which therefore we cannot offer as a part of our health insurance plans. Can you imagine if we were, as a church, to be forced to offer coverage for contraception, sterilization, and abortion? as a part of our health insurance plans. Can you imagine if our Catholic hospitals and clinics, our Catholic universities and colleges, our Catholic adoption agencies, our Catholic overseas development projects, our Catholic social service agencies, our Catholic publishing houses, the Knights of Columbus, the St. Vincent de Paul Society were all forced to offer coverage for contraception, sterilization, and abortion as part of their health insurance plans. And yet that is precisely what the government is asking us to do. How can our Catholic hospitals, our Catholic universities, and social service agencies hold to Catholic teaching, our moral teaching, that on the one hand says contraception, sterilization, and abortion are wrong, and then be forced by the government to offer health insurance, which covers those very things which we consider to be wrong. The federal government is now saying that if an institution serves people who are not of your faith, then you are not a religious institution. And you must, therefore, since you are no longer a religious institution, you must offer health insurance coverage for these objectionable procedures. So according to this new definition, our government is intended to be and human services mandate, our Catholic Religious Our Catholic hospitals are no longer considered religious institutions. They are not considered to be part of the church's ministry. Our Catholic social services is no longer considered to be a religious institution. All of these are not considered to be ministries of the church because they serve people who are not Catholic. What we're asking the federal government to do is grant a religious exemption for our Catholic institutions, which is precisely the law now. All of these institutions, our hospitals, our social service agencies, our adoption agencies, our universities, all of these institutions of the church currently enjoy religious exemption. But the new regulations will do away with those exemptions. So what the church is asking of the government is to keep the status quo, which is working now. No need to change it. But I think you can see that uh, a very narrow definition of religion has now been enacted by the federal government. 
They refine religion to be only what takes place within the church building. But caring for the sick, educating children, serving the poor, sheltering the homeless, helping refugees and immigrants, all of those are now not considered to be religion, according to this definition. And I think you can see how wrong that reason is. Because we know that our religious faith is shown in our care for the sick and care for the poor, in visiting the prison, in helping refugees and immigrants, and many other ways. Faith in Jesus blossoms into works of charity and mercy towards our neighbor. In our gospel reading today, we see the sick woman, because of her faith, reaches out to Jesus for healing. And Jesus says to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. And the synagogue official, because of his faith, reaches out to Jesus to heal his daughter, who is at the point of death. And St. Paul writes in his letter to the Corinthians today, Excel in faith. In other words, let your faith grow. Let your faith shine forth in your good works of charity and mercy. We cannot separate the fruits of faith from faith itself. Faith, which is blossoms into fruits of mercy and good works and kindness and charity, all of this is a response to God's grace and God's love, and it involves the whole person. Not just our faith, which we hold within, but the actions of faith also <coughs> is our response of faith to the God who loves us. So I ask for prayers during this fortnight for freedom. Maybe you could attend an extra weekday mass, or do a holy hour, or pray a rosary for this intention, or go to the UNCCB website to read about this issue, religious liberty. The government should not be intruding upon the free exercise of religion and our works of charity and service. The First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution says, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise there. Enforcing our Catholic institutions to offer health insurance coverage for contraception, sterilization, and abortion-inducing drugs is intruding on the free exercise of our religion, contrary to the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States. So it is an unjust law in which health and human services is imposing upon people of religion in the U.S. <coughs> My brothers and sisters, the Holy Eucharist, which we are here to celebrate this morning, is where our charity is constantly nourished. Jesus lays down his life for us. So great is his love, and he feeds us on the Eucharistic sacrifice of his body and blood from this altar. This love of Christ, which we celebrate here, then impels us to serve the poor, to serve the sick, to serve the needy, to serve not just people of our own faith, which is which this mandate would like to restrict us to, but to serve all people, regardless of their religious affiliation. This is our faith. This is a faith in Jesus, which blossoms forth into charity and mercy and kindness and service to our brothers and sisters, regardless of their religious affiliation or no religious affiliation. These are all the institutions which we have built up to serve others. We are asking the Lord to 
Give us the courage to continue to pray and to work and to witness for the repeal of this particular aspect of the health and human services. Amen.